Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Tonight's guest is Alicia Deschon. Alicia lives in Vancouver Island, Canada, and she's going to share her testimony with us today. She has a wonderful YouTube video testimony. You can find that on my blog and also on Alicia's YouTube. She'll remind you of the title at the end of the program. So Alicia, please start by telling us a little of your family background. Did any of your family have a faith? Um, actually, our family, um, like my my immediate family, we were not um, Christian. Um, although my very first memory is a memory of the miraculous, um, because I was four years old and we had um, our cousins over. My mom was babysitting. And uh, there was a two-year-old cousin that drowned on her on her watch, really. And um, unfortunately, it was a devastating blow to our family. And yet, God used it <laughs> to do the miraculous. And I'm I'm talking. There were angel visits with uh, one set of grandparents. Uh, there was a dream that Sarah. Sarah, who drowned, instead of jumping off the dock, she went right up into the sky. And my memory was actually seeing Sarah's shoe dangling over a cloud and God telling me, it's okay, I have her. And I ran and told my mom, and, and she, of course, was in a state where she couldn't acknowledge that even, trying to resuscitate her. Yeah. So that um, really, that turned into a depression for my mom, which led her to Christ in the end. And so she actually believes, as well as many people, about 30 people in my family, honestly, have come to know Christ because of that drowning. My goodness, that's that's really amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And so yeah. what was it like growing up, Alicia? Did you start to explore supernatural things did you have friends that were into the new age and that type of thing um i remember at about eight years old we um fooled around with a ouija board to the point where it scared us yeah um we were actually looking for sarah and um and and of course um that was just opening up doors to the demonic deception yeah mm -hmm. And then as an older teenager, uh, dabbling into drugs like LSD right. yeah. and mushrooms. Um, but literally, I had forgotten about Jesus. So you, you, um, I was, you did know Jesus when you were younger? I didn't experience him, although I had read the Gospels and at the in grade eight so i must have been 12 i remember i read the gospels and and i really truly believed i stood up for god in the class when uh we were brainstorming about what power means and god was completely left out and i stood up and i remember feeling a, a sense of joy about that but i honestly can't say that i experienced the holy spirit at that point yeah, yeah. Not yet. And so as time went on, you got into the New Age quite heavily. What what kind of things did you do? <laughs> what initiated that? Let me tell this story. Um, I got in an argument with my boyfriend, who I was living with and going to college with. And I got in an argument, and I wanted to go out for coffee with him, and he was too into painting. So off I went, and I went to a coffee shop, and there was a man in the corner who approached me as I went to buy 
coffee. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said, oh, you're who I've been waiting for. Listen, buy me a coffee and I'll do a tarot reading for you. And honestly, I didn't, I didn't know about a spiritual battle. I didn't know what really what the spiritual realm was all about. So I didn't even know what a tarot reading was. And so I said, sure. And I let him do a tarot reading on me. Now, uh, before, um, as soon as we sat down, he said, put your hands up on the table. And I put my hands up. And then he put his hands up on the table. And there was an electric, it, it felt like electricity go in my right hand, through my body, out my left, into his right hand and through his, and it was like this connection was made between the two of us. And I remember feeling like my brain was all of a sudden putty in his hand and he was very manipulative. Um, it, it was, it's a bit of a, it was a bit of a night that we had. He, he was very manipulative getting me to uh, listen to these new age um, tapes, brought me back to his place um told me things that I I couldn't believe he knew and he said to me you know God and all that yes there's so much more than that and that Laura is what got me searching for what does that mean yeah right and yeah and that was actually Laura a year to the day that Jesus showed up in my life that's amazing. A year, a year later. It, yeah, I, I couldn't believe it when I calculated it. Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what faith yeah. meant for evil. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful. It was only a year. It could have been a lot longer. It's true, yeah. It's true. And again, I encourage those moms who are praying moms, when Jesus showed up during, I know we'll get to that, um, my mom was praying for me at that moment with the, with a bunch of other parents praying for their children. That's so encouraging. And, and did mm -hmm. you did you get into tarot cards yourself then? Did you start to look at them and read them? Uh, no, I I actually had a friend who um, she believed that she came from a long line of uh, witches mm -hmm. and. Um, she did tarot readings and she actually gave it up because she had a revelation that it was evil. Wow. She didn't fight Christ, but she knew it was evil. And so she gave it up. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. So what kind of other new age things did you get into and what were your, what, what was your belief system like as a new ager? Right. So um, into the new age, um, I was really building myself up into um, connecting with my higher power. And um, there was a, a sense of pride that I was one with God, that I, I was, um, that I was really God and part of this one consciousness. So there was no personal God. There's no personal relationship, but I was um, uh, awakened or enlightened because I knew that I was part of the one conscious um, mind. And through drugs, I experienced, um, you know, st strange um, thoughts that I was one with um, different things, whether it was the whistle of my, my mom's pet bird. <laughs> Or, you know, the chair, just random, random things. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. As a new ager, I used to think that way too. We were all part of a, a consciousness that we had. We had attained a kind of a godlike being ourselves, and we were all one and meditating towards that as well. Right. And seeing... Um, other things like Christianity um, as limiting. Mm -hmm. And so you go into transcendental meditation? Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I would go to um, different places that I had created in my mind's eye. 
um, whether it's rooms or <clears throat> uh, places of luxury. I remember one, uh, like a sauna room or a steam room and uh, being almost like baptized and then the higher power would show up, this wise being with a long mustache and just tell me things. And it, actually it was this one that convinced me that we were all on an evolution process and we needed to evolve. Yeah. And yet we needed to get a group of people out of the way in order for that to happen. Yeah. We needed to kill all the Christians. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I think some listeners might be shocked at this, but again, I remember when I was a new ager, that was one of the teachings that all the Christians will have to be killed before the age of Aquarius can really, you know, take hold of, of the world. And probably like me, you just accepted that because these spirit guides were telling you that. So you just presumed it must be true. And yet now I realize it's such a deception because being a, a follower of Christ and allowing the Father to lead you just like he, you know, led Christ and being one with the Holy Spirit, that is, that is the next um step it's the it's the last step too <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely and so did you then it sounds to me like you had some teaching about luciferianism then if, if you had heard that teaching were you aware that a lot of the top mediums say that lucifer is god um no, no I, I didn't, didn't know, know of a, a title or a, a name like that, that. yeah no. no. Yeah. I've, I've but I do... Like, sorry. No, it's okay. I do remember um, thinking that if this is the truth, then it sucks because there's no personal relationship. It was still empty of that personal intimacy. Even though you were talking to these, you know, the higher, your higher self or whatever. Yeah. It It's strange when I think back, I guess... Um, there's no, they just aren't, don't have that power to connect and, and complete, you know, give any sense of wholeness in that area where Jesus sure does. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So I take it then when this so-called wise being turned up, although it was probably interesting, there was a part of you that still wasn't feeling satisfied with that relationship. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. And was there any point during this where you wondered if that wise being was actually a demon, as the Christians teach, or did you totally trust this this demon at this time? Honestly, I didn't even think about angels or demons. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know about angels or demons until Jesus showed up and um, then everything fell into place and I had the biggest revelation aha moment. And then I realized that that was definitely a demon trying to deceive me. Yeah, that's amazing. And so, so during this, this period, Alicia, did anything happen of the supernatural that was frightening or was it quite, kind of plain sailing for you um well i think the um out of body experiences where you're where you're literally disconnected from your body or you feel um it would be supernatural to have that um that physical experience i suppose where you lose your physical body and that was both kind of exhilarating and scary at the same time Right. right. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, I, I guess, guess because, because we are, are supernatural beings, we're kind of drawn to and almost addicted to um, experiencing the supernatural or however close we can get to it with what we know. Yeah, yeah. So then what happened with, with Jesus? What happened that that you began to, to get a revelation that he was God? Right. right. 
So I was in the middle of um, transcendental meditation and I was in the process of letting go of everything I ever learned. And I think that was the first time I had ever humbled myself to actually saying, I don't know anything. Because I had thought I knew a lot. But um, <laughs> anyways, I literally cried out to the universe and said, I, I will trade whatever I have ever learned just for one thing. I just want to know the truth. Yeah. And that's when Jesus showed up. That's awesome. And he said to me in a very personal, loving, um, but father voice, Alicia, find your Bible and open it. That's awesome. And it was an audible voice. It was very much an audible voice. Yeah. It was, it was also a manifest presence. Wow. Like, very humbling. But actually, it was a panic because I, I thought... I was so excited to open my Bible and, and see what he had for me, but I didn't know where it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it must but have been just I found awesome. it. Yeah. I think I really love that, Alicia. And, you know, I love the fact that, you know, you were searching for the truth and a lot of New Agers and people involved in the supernatural, they call themselves truth seekers because they really want to know the truth. Um, but sometimes they they get into these things instead. But it was lovely that there you were seeking the truth, and Jesus revealed Himself to you. Mm. It was just beautiful. And so you you found your Bible. Yes, I did. I I found it in a box up in the closet, and uh, it was at the bottom of the box. And I dusted it off. And when I opened it up, there was in red letters Jesus speaking. The Father and I are one. And that dropped me to my knees because, Laura, I thought I was one with God. And here was Jesus telling me, no, I am one with God, not you. And that really humbled me because I realized what a fool I must have been like to God. <laughs> and, and then he, of course, comforted me uh, as he does once he humbles us with those loving words um because the next thing i my eyes fell on was i am the good shepherd i will leave my 99 and find my one lost sheep and i knew at that point that i was his so that was very exciting uh, that brought me much joy and i started laughing and and the joy of the lord just filled me and i was I was literally bouncing off the walls. I was so excited, <laughs> jumping up and down. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. beautiful. And it, it's wonderful how he knows what scriptures to give us, depending on where we were at. And that scripture is just so apt for a new age, as you say, because, you know, they think they're at one with the universe. And there was God saying he was one with the Father. It's just beautiful. Yeah, it's true. And so did you go through a process then of, of throwing out New Age books and how to think? Yes, that? yes. Yeah. Actually, I was able to um, connect in with um, the uh, a church that was very used to the occult. Um, they lived in a very occult um, area of Nanaimo. Uh -huh. And um, and one night at one of the youth meetings, um, we talked about burning all our stuff. And so I remember bringing everything. And it wasn't just me. There was a lot of kids there who were bringing Ouija boards and Pokemon cards and, and things that they just knew they were addicted to. And it wasn't from God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Pardon? It's, awesome. it's, it's awesome that church had that knowledge and, and wisdom to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not, I don't think it's, um, it's, it feels quite as good just uh, hand, giving it away. I think it needs to be destroyed and then it really sets you free. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So what, are the, 
sorry. Oh. No, I just wanted to point out because you want to do unto others, right? And you, you wouldn't want anyone handing you an occult book. <laughs> so check it. Yeah, exactly. That's true. What were the main changes that took place in your life when you gave your life to Jesus? Right. So the biggest thing, and I want to encourage all your radio listeners, is having a right standing relationship with the Father through Jesus' work on the cross. He gave it to us and he made a way. And so my job, Laura, is to simply um, not, not quench the Holy Spirit and not grieve the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and that's a moment-by-moment moment relationship. So when I catch myself in a moment of the flesh, I've learned that running away doesn't work. <laughs> we should have learned that back in the Garden of Eden. But running away doesn't work. Um, the Father wants us to run to him. And he's made um, himself available for that. And he longs for us to run to Daddy whenever we catch ourselves in a moment of the flesh. And so that is is freedom. Uh, that's all I can say in one word. It's complete freedom to have that relationship. And that's called righteousness. Righteousness is not being good. It's being in right standing with the Father, knowing your sins are forgiven um, because they're confessed and repented of moment by moment. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, some people might have their own idea and think it's to do with obeying certain rules and but you know, when you're in love with someone and you know that person loves you back you just want to to make them happy you don't want them to be upset over you know anything you do so you you have that desire to to be obedient and to walk with jesus and so it's, it's really a, a loved relationship rather than you know obeying rules like you might have done in school type of thing well said yeah yeah being in love makes obeying um actually a joy instead of a burden mm -hmm. so alicia and uh, there may be christians listening who have friends or work colleagues who are involved in the new age and they may be wanting to reach out to them what kind of advice would you give a Christian when speaking to others? Mm. Um, well, I would, I would encourage you to humbly encourage them to seek the truth because you're confident that the truth will lead them to Jesus Christ. That's a good answer. Yeah, just be bold and, and share their faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give to anyone listening who's perhaps involved in the new age just now? Mm. Uh, when you when you seek the truth with your whole heart, it looks like letting go of everything you've ever learned and really um, crying out for it like a baby cries out for food and my promise to you is that we have a good father and he will feed you he'll feed you truth mm -hmm. amen and it's like that scripture in, in jeremiah seek me with all your heart and you will find me that's right yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah, he doesn't hide because he wants to stay hidden. He keeps himself hidden um, and knows that those who look for him will find him. Amen. That's mm -hmm. true. He wants to be found. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're almost at the end of, of the interview now, Alicia, and it's been so good to, to talk with you. Could you remind listeners, please, about your YouTube channel? Oh, sure. <laughs> now, I really share um, my YouTube channel with my, my 14-year-old 14, 14 boy with autism. Um, and he makes a lot of uh, little cartoons and animations and skits. Um, but my, uh, my username is Alicia, A-L-I-S-H-A, D-J-C. Um, 
And that's my shared one with him where my testimony that I just shared with you today is on that. Um, and then I'm just starting a new one. I just started it before I got on with you. And it's a grace for the number four life. Grace, Grace for, for life, life eternal. eternal. Mm -hmm. and, and that, that one, I share my testimony of how um, I got miraculously healed of cancer, cancer as well um, when, when Jesus uh, showed up and taught me that he was trust trustworthy uh, while I was drowning in a reservoir. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That, that's awesome. And I hope everybody... What she watches that. That sounds really, really encouraging. Um, mm -hmm. So could you please pray for listeners now, Alicia, as you feel led to pray? I'd love, love to. to. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mm. Oh, oh, Father. Father. Thank, Thank you so, so much for loving us, us and for calling us your, your children. children. Lord, Lord, open our eyes, open, open our hearts. hearts so that we can see you for who you truly are, the lover of our soul, and someone who is so trustworthy. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us. We need you now more than the world has ever needed you. We need you now, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Help us to desire you more. And I, I pray that we have a reverence for your spirit, Lord, so that we can consider you in everything we say and do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. That was beautiful. Mm-hmm. He's so good. <laughs> he is. He's an amazing God. Uh, well, I well, hope you, you, were, you enjoyed tonight, Alicia, and it was just lovely to, to have you on the program, and I thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Laura. And I just pray that you have more and more opportunity to share um, the supernatural and how God is real and how he heals and all the beautiful things about him uh, with as many listeners as possible. Oh, thank you, Alicia. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Well, guys, I hope you were all really encouraged tonight by Alicia's testimony. And please go to my blog where you can see her testimony and her video and go to her YouTube channel, Grace for Life Eternal. And please tune in again next time for another powerful testimony of Christ's transforming love and power. God bless you and goodbye for now. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.